So we are still on the economics A level. The topic today is business objectives. And when we talk about business objectives, we are talking about what a firm or a business is aiming to achieve over a period of time. That's what business objective is, what you are targeting, what you want to achieve over a period of time. But today's focus, today's focus will be on profit maximization. But before we go there, let's see what they say. Let's, let's see what they write about business objective. Or what is being written about business objective. Business objectives. A business objective is a result that a firm aims to achieve. It forms part of the planning process for firms and we influence the price policies and the plan output for the firm. So, a business, uh, a business objective becomes, well, becomes part of a business plan. It becomes part of the pricing strategy. It becomes part of the output that will be produced over a period of time. Why? The head said, it forms part of the planning process for firms and we influence their pricing policy. So let's have the public today's topic, well, we're going to focus on profit maximization. To maximize profit, we need pricing strategy. We need a price strategy. So that's why here we said it becomes planning, it becomes, it influences the pricing policy. And when we talk about pricing policy, we're talking about maybe cost plus pricing, scheming, prior scheming, now price scheming, penetrating pricing. Whatever pricing strategy a business wants to use will be based on the business objective that is being set by the business. And not only the price the business will be selling, also the output. So, a business objective can, will also influence what is being produced in the firm. So there are four main objectives discussed below. We have profit maximization, which is the main topic today. We have revenue maximization, sales volume maximization, and we have profit satisfaction. But today's focus, like I told you earlier, is about profit maximization. So we go to profit maximization. In your classical economics, it is assumed that the interests of owners or shareholders are the most important. Why are the interests of shareholders and owners of the business are the most important? It is most important, it is more important because they are the ones that have invested into the business. They are the ones that start up the business or the firm. As a result, they want to return on their investment. So what their interest is, is profit maximization. So we we'll go on further. Just as consumers attempt to maximize their satisfaction and workers attempt to maximize their rewards from working, so shareholders will be motivated solely by maximizing their gain from the company. Every individual would have a reason to, you know, to engage himself or herself. So for consumers, what is the reason why they want to buy? They want to, they want to maximize utility. They want to maximize satisfaction. They want utility when they consume. And what is utility? The amount of satisfaction consumers are able to derive from the consumption of any commodity. So as we said here, consumers want to accept uh, maximize satisfaction. So for every single bit of consumption, they want it to be satisfiable. So they want affordable prices, they want quality products. This means about consumer satisfaction. That is in the, in the aspect of consumers. For workers, why are they working? They are working because they want to maximize their rewards. And when we talk about rewards, it will be salary, it will be the benefit. So consumer workers also have a reason for getting themselves engaged. Now, to talk about the owners of the business. For the owners of the business, they wouldn't have invested into the business without an aim, which is to maximize profit. So what, which is profit maximization. So new classical economics assume that firms aim to maximize short-term profit. This is achieved where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue in the short term and determines the firm's level of production. So when we talk about profit maximization, here we would say profit maximization simply means our MC equals to our MR. So whenever your MC, your marginal cost equals to your marginal revenue, it means you are, you are maximizing your profit. What does that, what is marginal cost itself? Marginal cost simply means the cost of producing an extra unit of output. Why marginal revenue is the extra amount made in the cost of producing an extra unit of product or output. That is marginal cost equals to marginal revenue. So when you see marginal cost equals to marginal revenue, it means the firm is able to maximize its profit. Also, another way to maximize profit would be being able to sell at a price slightly above the average variable cost of production. And what is our average variable cost of production? Our ABC. Our ABC is our VC divided by output, which means if you are able to sell at a price slightly above the average variable cost, it means you are able to cover up for your variable cost. And when you are able to cover, cover up for your variable cost, it means yes, in the short term you might not be making a profit or you might be making a loss, but the future is brighter. It means the business can still continue to operate because your variable cost is your cost of 
or the cost that changes as the level of output changes. And when you are able to sell above the variable cost, it means you are able to sell more than the, the amount spent in the, in the cost of producing or the cost of producing the product. So that is what is being said. So we'll continue. This is actually your marginal cost is also marginal revenue. I explained that, which means if our MC costs our MR, it means profit maximization. In markets, when there is every brand, such as maybe the soap, such as soap powders, prices are likely to be stable. However, the commodity industry where firms are producing homogeneous goods such as copper, paper, or wheat, prices are likely to be unstable. What are they trying to say here? We have stability in prices when it comes to branded products. Because for branded products, there is always brand reality. There's always a niche within that market. And because there's a niche in that market, the prices are likely to be stable because consumers know where they want to buy, who they want to buy from. But when it comes to a market where there's, there's fierce competition, like where they sell homogeneous goods, like goods that are similar in, you know, similar in the cost of usage, like the market for copper, the market for paper, the market for wheat, we have different wheat products, we have different paper companies. So here, prices are likely to be unstable. Why are prices unstable? Prices are unstable here because every individual, because they are selling to the same customers, they, want, they have to sell to the same customers. They are producing the same, almost the same product to sell to the same customers. And when they are selling to the same customers, the customers are the ones available. There's no customer in heaven. So that means we have to just two customers within this earth. So as a result of that, different businesses, different firms will come up with their own pricing strategy. That is the point there. So as a result of coming up with different pricing strategy, prices are likely to be unstable. Short-term profit maximization implies that firms will be prepared to supply even if they make a loss in the short run. So long as prices are above the average variable cost. And I said this earlier, the average variable cost is our variable cost by our output. So what you are saying here is that for short-term profit maximization, irrespective of whatever might be the situation of the firm, in as much as they are able to cover, they are able to sell at a price slightly above the average cost of average variable cost. They will be willing, they will be happy to supply goods because that will, be, that, will be, that will apply to profit maximization in the short term. It will, and they are all able to cover up their cost. So, what is profit maximization itself? Profit maximization, of course, and the output here, the difference between total revenue and total cost is the greatest. So, we're talking about total revenue, which is price multiplied by the quantity produced or quantity sold. Our uh, total cost is the total cost, which is our available cost plus our fixed cost. So when we talk about profit maximization, so profit maximization also means that we are able to achieve the highest possible total revenue when comparing with the total cost. So our total revenue 